I've had the 3D chamber for about six months now and all I can say is good things. But even though I only have good things to say, there's still some issues that you might need to fix with your 3D chamber, one of them being the red and white flashing light from the slight movement of your atomizer chamber. This can happen for a number of reasons, mostly because you've got a little bit of oil built up underneath your atomizer chamber in between your base pin connector. First thing you're going to want to do is do a heat cycle for your 3D chamber. This way any of the oil that is underneath your chamber gets heated so it doesn't stick and cause any problems with your base pin connector or any of your bottom brass pins or even your 3D chamber. So once your chamber is heated up all the way, unscrew it, take it out, and you're going to want to do an ISO soaking. As you can see this thing is filthy. You're going to want to definitely put it in for some time. Maybe do two soakings because there might be be some left over residually from your first run at isopropyl soaking. Usually I'll do two isopropyl soakings, the first one in some already used isopropyl alcohol, and then the second one to just clean off everything that hasn't dissolved in that first soaking. While we're waiting for our chamber to isopropyl soak, we're going to get back to the base pin connector. As you can see, this thing is covered in reclaim, which is preventing any type of connectivity between the atomizer chamber and the base pin connector. So we gotta do a deep cleaning isopropyl swab to get this all cleaned up. This may take up to 10 Q-tips. And when it comes to Q-tips to recommend for cleaning the base pin connector, I would recommend heady mops over glob mops, mostly because heady mops have a much smaller Q-tip end, which allows you to get into the nooks and crannies of everything. Glob mops, they're very good for large area spaces, but when it comes to these nooks and crannies of the base pin, it is very important to make sure that you have a smaller Q-tip. Now getting back to the 3D chamber, it's been soaking for a while, we're going to end up cleaning it off and getting any of the residual isopropyl that has any dissolved reclaim in it off, and then we're going to take it in for a second isopropyl bathing, this time in fresh isopropyl alcohol. As you can see, we got some chaz building up on the sidewalls. This is on purpose. I've been trying to get it to do that for a while, which will have a separate video going through how to remove that. But until then, we're going to go for a second isopropyl soaking. This is because if you don't do a second isopropyl soaking, the first isopropyl soaking reclaim from that isopropyl that's still in the isopropyl will dry to your chamber and you'll be having some flavor issues. Now, as you can see from that second isopropyl bath soaking that it was important because you can still see a lot of reclaim coming off of there. Now it's squeaky clean. We're still not cleaning those edges. Wait for that video, we'll be back with that, but make sure that you Q-tip your whole chamber after you're done with that second isopropyl soaking. Especially dry Q-tip swab the bottom brass pins of the 3D atomizer chamber. This is important to make sure that you have a steady connection with your base's brass pin connector. Now that your atomizer chamber and base pin connector are both cleaned off, squeaky clean, start her up, you're good to go, not a problem. Maybe we'll get another red white light, but make sure you just adjust those pins on the bottom and you should be good to go. If you have any issues going forward, make sure you bring some tweezers with you if you're taking your journey bag out on mobile. Make sure that you always have those tweezers. It is very important because those brass pins can be finicky, but if you fix them good enough, you'll make sure that no matter how much tension you put on that atomizer chamber, that it will most likely not have that red, white flashing light come up. But if you're getting that red and white ambulance light, just move those pins slightly out. You don't have to take them out, put them back in all the way. You just have to move them out and make sure that when you're connecting that atomizer, chamber to your peak pro base that they're slightly ajar so that when they push in they're not being pushed in completely and they cannot actually detect a connection with the base's brass pin. So now your 3D chamber should be up and running. I've been using my 3D chamber for about six plus months now and it has been working like a charm. I haven't had it over the temperature of 560 degrees. No cracks period. I had a little bit of chazzing. We'll be back with another video going through how to fix that. If you haven't already, mash that like button, subscribe to the channel, get ready more of content and if you have any questions about anything make sure you put them in the comments below as always stay elevated and peace out